Get in your book too on page 82 if you're following along in the book, which you should be at this point. Um, so in this series circuit with a 2 ohm resistor right here and a 4 ohm resistor, the 2 amp current is the same throughout even though the voltage drops across each resistor. Alright, so let's talk about what they're doing. The 2 amps should remain constant. That's one of our laws. The amperage should be the same everywhere in the circuit. Okay, let's look and see where did they find that 2 amps. Well, if I knew my value of my resistors, 2 ohms and 4 ohms, okay, I can add them together and I get a total of 6 ohms. Okay, if I if use an ohms law, if I take 12 volts and divide it by 6 ohms, I get my unknown over here, which is 2 amps, right? Okay, so now I know I've got those 2 amps flowing the circuit, even if they hadn't told me. Okay, now, now that I don't know my voltage drop, I can take and multiply the 2 amps, which is the same everywhere in the circuit, by the 2 ohms, and I'll get 4 volts, right? Which is what they've got for the voltage drop. Okay, now if I come down here to the bottom, and I take, I don't know how many voltage drop I've got, but if I take my... 2 amps, same everywhere in the circuit, and I multiply it by my 4 ohms, I'm going to get 8 volts, right? 8 volts plus 4 volts is going to give me 12 volts. They have to equal source voltage. Okay, another example. What are we doing here? That looks like to me they're asking us what's the value of resistor 2. Hmm. What's the value of resistor 2? Well, how can we find that? All right, we know our voltage, and we know our amperage, right? So we know we've got two resistors. Hmm. Well, what about if we were to use Ohm's Law? And in using Ohm's Law, oh, excuse me. And in using Ohm's Law, we were to take our 12 volts that we know we have because we need to find our total resistance, right? Once we find our total resistance, we know this one's 3 ohms, so this has got to equal the rest of it. Hmm. Pretty good. Now we know our amperage. It's the same everywhere in the circuit. It's 3 amps. 12 divided by 3 is going to give me 4 ohms. Okay, so now I know I've got 4 ohms in the circuit, right? I've only got two resistors, so if that one's 3, then this one's got to be 1 ohm. Okay? Does that make sense? My total was 4. I've only got 2, and we already knew that was 3. That was given. So I knew now my resistance is 4 ohms in that circuit. Next one, let's look at this. Looks like to me it wants to know this one as well. Well, now I've got two resistors, but kind of the same thing. I'm going to take my voltage using Ohm's Law again. Voltage at the top. Okay, amperage on the left resistance on the right, I know I've got 2 amps in the circuit. So let's look at 2 amps. 12 divided by 2 is going to give me 6 ohms. Now I look and I've got 3 ohms here. Okay, I've got 1 ohm here. So I'm, if there's only a third resistor, that's got to be 2 ohms there. The next example. Now it looks like they're giving us all the resistance values, but it wants to know what the voltage is in the circuit. Well, that's pretty simple, right? Because now we just turn Ohm's law around, and we say that our voltage is our unknown. Okay, but what is known is we have 4 amps, okay, and we have 1, 2, 3 ohms of resistance. 4 times 3 is going to give us this voltage of 12 volts. So I can go back here and say I've got 12 volts. And I'm just using Ohm's Law IR to solve these things, where E equals voltage, I equals amperage, and R equals resistance. I can solve all of this stuff just using this formula. Now let's take a look at the next one. What don't we know now? 
Well, you ask yourself, we don't know our amperage. True that. But what I do know is, that should be an R. And I kind of messed up. But what I do know is my voltage, right? 12 volts. What I do know is my resistance. The sum of individual resistance is equal to the total resistance. So I'm looking for the total resistance to find the amperage. 2, 2, and 2 is 6 ohms. 12 divided by 6 is 2. I can say I've got 2 amps in this circuit, and I've got it everywhere because that's one of my laws is that amperage is the same throughout the circuit. Let's talk about what we've learned here in this chapter. In a simple series circuit, the current remains constant throughout, but the voltage drops as current flows through the resistances in the circuit. So current's the same everywhere, but the voltage drops throughout the circuit. The voltage drop across each resistance or load is directly proportional to the value of the resistance compared. As resistance increases, resistance increases, the voltage drop also increases, and vice versa. The sum of the voltage drops equals the applied, or what we've said, source voltage, which is Kirchhoff's law. An open or break anywhere in a series circuit stops all the current from flowing. So if I go back up here to the top, and let's say I'm looking at one of our first examples. Anywhere I break this circuit, if I unhook something anywhere, all current stops flowing. So all current will stop flowing at any break in the circuit. Okay, at open or break anywhere, stops all current. Okay. All right, so that's the second part, and that's using our formulas. If you need to go back and rewatch this, that's the beauty of having the video. You can go right back in there and look at it again. Um, of course, if you've got any questions on this stuff, you know my contact information. I'll write it down for you again, 536-7228. My email is taylorh at halifaxcc.edu. And you can Skype me at hunter.taylor.76. Of course, you got to download Skype first. I haven't had anybody use that yet, but, you know, it's a, it's a really interesting tool, and you may want to consider it. Okay. We'll move on to the next video, which we're going to talk about chapter 6, which is parallel circuits. And you'll find them a little interesting. We're going to change the rules on you just a little bit. Um, they differ from series circuits in a lot of different ways. So let's move on to that one.